Hey everyone and welcome to the third video in this series on CIFO. If you missed the first two, in the first video we talk about what CIFO is and the signs and symptoms that have been associated with the condition in the medical research. And in the second video we just discussed the risk factors for CIFO. So what are some of the things that might actually allow for an overgrowth to occur in the first place? Those two things are absolutely critical to have appropriate interventions and treatment of CIFO, but also can be really helpful when we're trying to understand whether someone might have CIFO causing their unexplained digestive symptoms. The reason being is there is no comprehensive um, clinical test for CIFO. So in the research, what they do is a medical procedure called aspiration, essentially a sort of an endoscopy where they're then going to literally suck fluid out of the small intestine to see what organisms are living there. Now that's highly invasive. It is not something we're going to get access to apart from if we're in a research trial or in some kind of hospital setting. Now we also know that SIBO breath testing is not appropriate if we're trying to rule in or rule out CIFO because Candida doesn't produce hydrogen or methane gas which is what we're looking at in SIBO breath tests. So we're left with arguably one clinical test and that is an organic acid urine test. There are a couple of labs that offer these tests and they have markers within those urine tests that can be really helpful in understanding whether someone might have a fungal overgrowth. The limitation, unfortunately, is that it is not specific to the small intestine. So if you have an elevated level of arabinose, one of the markers in these urinary or organic acid tests, that is not confirming small intestine fungal overgrowth. It's really just confirming fungal overgrowth. It could be in the small intestine, but it could be in the large intestine. It could be in the oral microbiome of the mouth. It might be in the vaginal microbiome. It could be in the sinuses, or maybe it's just systemic. So in clinic, there is no test that is going to give you a concrete answer that you have small intestine fungal overgrowth. The urinary organic acid test is really the best bet, but as we say, it's, it's non-specific. However, what I do want to add to this is once you know the symptoms and once you know, more importantly, the risk factors, you can start to develop a hypothesis around whether someone has CIFO. So, have you had several courses of antibiotics? Have you used PPIs, proton pump inhibitors, which are medications to lower stomach acid? Have you had any head traumas? Have you had periods of chronic slash acute stress? Have you just had a really poor diet that is very high in refined processed carbohydrates? Do you have sort of more systemic symptoms of a fungal issue, dandruff, jock itch, uh, or vaginal candidiasis, a fungal toenail? Those are all going to give you some insight into whether you might have CIFO. Now, a relatively common scenario which might increase our suspicion of CIFO is if someone has a positive SIBO test, they then successfully treat SIBO, in particular if they try to treat it with rifaximin or antibiotics. On repeat testing, they now have a negative SIBO test, but they're still symptomatic it's possible that this is a situation whereby someone may have CIFO. We know in the research, as I shared in the first video in the series, that a good percentage of people, often around 25%, have both SIBO and CIFO at the same time. So if you're taking a conventional medicine approach of antibiotics, you might deal with the SIBO, but you might be left with the CIFO. The good news is when you take a sort of more natural approach using herbs such as oregano oil, we know that oregano oil is both antibacterial and antifungal. So we're often killing two birds with one stone, so to speak, at least to a degree, when we're taking a more complementary medicine approach to treating SIBO. So I hope that helps a little bit, gain a little bit more understanding about what our options are if we suspect SIBO. In the next video, I'm going to discuss some of the nutritional 
lifestyle and supplement interventions that we might want to consider if we decide that we do have SIFO and we want to treat it.